Terry Barber is a best-selling author and founder of Lighthouse Catholic Media. Jesse Romero is a retired law enforcement officer, a former kickboxing champion with a master's degree in theology. And together, they share a passion for evangelization and PhDs in common sense. You're listening to The Terry and Jesse Show on Immaculate Heart Radio. To join the show, call 888-526-2151. Here's Terry and Jesse. Have you heard about these three hot topics we're going to talk in this holy hour of power? Yep, three hot topics sizzling. U.S. Bishop uh, Merlino (laughs) in his diocese, which is Madison, Wisconsin, he's basically said that as of next year, uh, he's asking people in his diocese to receive communion on the tongue while kneeling down. Wow. We want to talk. Is this microphone on? Yep. Uh, is that Nancy, fake news? Wanna... Wait a minute. Is that fake <laughs> news? No, that's, <laughs> that's true real news. news. Thank you, Jesus. We also want to talk about Cardinal Raymond Burke. He says that uh, basically nobody denies that we're having problems in the world right now. Evil is rampant in the world, in this country, outside this country. Cardinal Raymond Burke was interviewed, and he said basically the answer to all the evil in the world is strong Catholic families. So we want to talk about that as well. And finally, you talk about Braveheart. You talk about a man of courage. You talk about a modern St. John the Baptist. We're going to be talking about, in the last segment, uh, a Greek Orthodox bishop who calls on the Turkish president, Er Erdogan, Erdogan, He basically says, you need to denounce Islam and be baptized into the Orthodox Church. And you need to take Russian President Vladimir Putin as your godfather. And this is no joke. He wrote him a 37-page letter. So we'll talk about this Greek Orthodox bishop calling out a Muslim president and telling him you must convert to Christianity. Uh, Jesse, are you sure that wasn't the 11th century? Our, and th- I mean, again, folks, this is real. This happened. And I have to tell you here at the Terry and Jesse show, when we hear things like that, I'll be honest with you. I don't I don't say, well, what do you think about that? You can I can say, what do you think about? It? I'll tell you what I think about it. That <laughs> bishop has got you know what? He's strong and he's willing to say what most people won't say. And I really appreciate him doing that. Jesse, the thought about uh, the bishop uh, up in um Madison, Wisconsin, Marino, he's uh, giving the telling people that we need to start receiving Holy Communion, kneeling and on the tongue. Uh, I, for 40 years, I've been doing studies on the real presence of Christ when I do my travels. I was in Sacramento yesterday. I'm going to be in Phoenix this weekend. I ask everybody in churches, what do you believe about the real presence? Can I tell you? And, I, and if the bishops asked me, I would tell them this. Bishops, I'm in the trenches. I see Joe Sixpack going to Mass. And they don't believe in the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. We need to do something. And I said it a couple months ago. You can listen to the podcast. You know what I said? I wish and pray that a bishops would allow us to go back to the practice of kneeling and receiving on the tongue to help us understand that this isn't McDonald's when we go to Holy Communion. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jesse. I said it and I meant it. Dr. Ed Mazza, you're here with us. I am because folks say I'm a couple of fries short of a Happy Meal. <laughs> well, tell us what your thoughts are, brother. Well, Give us your intellectual opine. Yeah, yeah, I just gave you my heart. You know, amen, brother. And You know, we, we got the heart and we got the head. Uh, uh, Cardinal Ratzinger, Dozer Ratzinger, Pope Emeritus Benedict the Sixteenth. Uh, when he was Pope, he used to, uh, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but he, he initiated the practice where he would give communion to people kneeling and on the tongue. At his public yes, ceremonies, at his public masses. So what mm-hmm. better example could we have than, than uh, uh, Pope Benedict the Sixteenth? Good point. You know, here's, I like what Bishop Merlino says. Yeah. Uh, here's, I, 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 this one section in the article says this, okay? Until the 1960s, Catholics around the world received communion kneeling and on the tongue. The practice of communion in the hand grew out of a disobedience that can be traced back to Holland. Because of the widespread abuse of receiving in the hand, Pope Paul VI granted an indult for the practice in a 1969 letter from the Sacred Congregation for Divine Worship. That's the history behind this. Do any of you guys want to comment? Yeah, I do. I'll tell you what I'm going to say. Don't wait too long, Terry. Jesse, I read that document, and I read what the Vatican said about receiving Holy Communion on the hand and the requirements 
that have been just discarded. But I'm going to let Dr. Ed give the historical perspective. But let me just mention this. Sometimes it takes a convert to show us credo Catholics the beauty of our Catholic faith. I'll never forget, almost 30 years ago, I had Dr. Scott Hahn out here in California on Corpus Christi's feast day. And he gave a whole series on the Eucharist, the source and summit of the Christian life. And he gave a biblical explanation on the real presence. And the Catholics' mouths were just dropping like, wow, is that what we believe? Yeah, it was a biblical presentation. I'm going to give it away, the first CD of a three-CD set. But i got to tell you, everybody who's listening, Mom, Dad, we need this catechesis on the Eucharist. The Vatican II documents say the Eucharist is the source and summit of the Christian life. If you want to get the Eucharist source and summit by Dr. Hahn, call us at 877-526-2151. Dr. Ed, what are your thoughts about that? Well, a couple things. Uh, first off, uh, uh, Jesse, you used a good uh, vocab, Scrabble word there, uh, indult. Yeah. Uh, uh, what that mm-hmm. means is that it's, it's sort of the exception to the rule. So, believe it or not, folks might not know this, but communion in the hand is the exception to the rule. The rule is actually receiving on the tongue. Sure couldn't tell. <laughs> well, that's because back in the <laughs> 70s, when uh, when the Vatican first gave permission for yeah. this, there were very strict guidelines and criteria that had to be met. And there was some funny business going on with certain bishops' conferences about this. And uh, certain pe- certain blocks of people, in a very Olinskyite way, kind of pushed some stuff in in that didn't really fit. Folks, if you just tune into the Terry and Jesse show, we're on fire. You know why we're on fire? Because we love Jesus Christ and his bride, the church, and we love Jesus in the Eucharist, and we're talking about that right now. We've got three men who love Jesus and are not afraid to say it. Now, some people look at us and go, man, you guys are evangelical Catholics. You know what we are? We're radioactive Catholics, and we want all of our listeners to fall deeper in love with Jesus Christ. That's the point of this show. You got three guys here that have a man crush on Jesus. Amen. Amen. Dr. Ed, continue with this, the whole well, indult. Yeah, you know, I, I actually, if I could just back up with that one second and, and say, because I want to get this out, is that uh, receiving communion in the hand was actually the Protestant way of doing it. Um, and that's because Martin Luther, folks might not know this, but Martin Luther was the first person in, in 1,500 years of Christianity to reject the Mass as a sacrifice. Uh, and saw it more as a meal, and and therefore uh, it was the it was the Protestant practice to take it in the hand. After Vatican II, certain bishops and certain priests in in in, in the church began to think we gotta we gotta make the lit- liturgy more amenable to Protestants. Yeah, I've, and and yet if, if, if you you guys know from from Catholic converts, one of the great things that's brought Protestants into the church just the is tr- is the opposite traditional yeah, devotion. Of course, of course. And and Jesse, I just have to say something. Someone just texted me, and this is off the topic, but i got to let everybody know this. Not it's off the topic, but it's important. Two days ago, before I went to Sacramento, I got a text at around 10.30 in the morning. Or, oh, about 11.30 in the morning when we're on the radio, saying, Would you please pray for a young 14-year-old girl? She's on her way to get an abortion. And so I stopped the show. I had everybody get down on their knees and pray for this girl, and that the angels would intercede in stopping her from having an abortion. Yesterday, I'm on my flight back from Sacramento, and I get a notice saying, Thank you, Jesus. The girl decided to keep the baby. She's 21 months, 21 weeks thank old the in the baby. And I want to thank, thank our Jesus. listeners, Jesse, because that's what we're here for. That's the power of prayer. Prayer power, prayer power here at Immaculate Heart Radio. And again, Jess, you and I are going to be out talking about Our Lady. We're going to be at the Immaculate Heart Mary Parish in Mort Glen, Colorado, May 12th and 13th, talking on... At Fatima, so if people want to go to that, uh, we would love to see it out there in Colorado. Yes, yes. You know, Cardinal Sarah, who, uh, who uh, he's also made, his name's Cardinal Robert Sarah. He's a prefect of the Congregation for Divine Worship. Mm-hmm. He's also spoke, you know, he basically backs up with, with Bishop Morlino saying, he says there's a serious crisis of faith happening in the Catholic Church. Here's what he says, due to an impoverished liturgy. Did he get that word? due to an impoverished liturgy. And Cardinal Sarah, he said that the crisis is not only at the level of the Christian faithful, but also especially amongst priests and bishops. He says, has made us incapable of understanding the Eucharistic liturgy as a sacrifice as identical to the act performed once and for all by Jesus Christ, making present the sacrifice of the cross in an unbloody manner throughout the church through the different ages, places, people, and nations. So uh, uh, Brother Cardinal is saying a lot of the problem stems with the bishops and the priests 
who have ho- it, they basically made the mass more horizontal and the vertical aspect of mass is gone and let's not forget what saint paul says about kneeling down i mean that this goes back to saint paul in the book of philippians at the name of jesus every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that jesus christ is lord all right jesse i'm going to say something put your headset on record it because i'm going to stand by this the emperor has no clothes on i said it and i meant it i go all over this country and i see a lot of parishes and i'm not trying to be negative i'm just being realistic just the facts ma'am and the facts are we need a renewal and the Cardinals are telling us, the Popes are telling us, and this bald-headed old man, after 40 years of apostolic work, is saying, I see what he's talking about. And so that's why I want to give away the Eucharist Source and Summit CD by Scott Hahn. Listen to what he does. He shows how Catholic understanding of the mystical body of Christ and both in the church reveals a new and the Holy Eucharist is clearly described in the Bible. Dr. Hahn uses his Protestant biblical training to demonstrate the centrality of the Holy Eucharist and Christian teachings where the Catholic Church is on its earthly joints with all creation in heaven and earth in the eternal hymn of praise. Sign me up, everybody. I've been going to Mass since I'm 14. And when I found out what the Mass is, I fell in love with Jesus Christ, and I want you to also. And if you'd like to get a copy of that CD set, call 877-526-2150. But yes, we're on fire. Jesse, we have you coming May 6th for the Marijuana Conference. I want people to know there are some seats still available. Call 877-526-2150. I'll tell you what you're going to get when you get the Dr. Ed, Ter- Terry, and Jesse show. you get the facts, and you get it with passion because we believe it. When we come back, we're going to continue to talk about Jesus Christ and his bride, the church. Don't turn that dial. Back to the Terry and Jesse show on Immaculate Heart Radio. Want to join the conversation? Call 888-526-2151. Now here's Terry and Jesse. Holy hour of power, spiritual fitness trainers. There's an article on LifeSite News. It's called U.S. Bishop Robert Morlino asks diocese to receive communion on the tongue and kneeling. And that's what we're talking about right now. In fact, uh, again, even Bishop Morlino has stated that he's observed that less than 25% of Catholics in the U.S. now attend Holy Mass. This comes from Bishop Robert Morlino. He's saying this. And here's what Cardinal Sarah says what's happened, and I'll just flip it over to, to our expert here on history, uh, Dr. Ed. But, but uh, Cardinal Sarah says this, that uh, there's often a sacrilegious tendency to reduce the Holy Mass to a simple convivial meal. The celebration of a profane feast, the community's celebration of itself. <laughs> uh, Dr. Ed, I mean, historically, uh, didn't Luther Holt want this uh, to also happen at the Reformation? Just uh, reduce it to a simple meal? Uh, exactly. Uh, I, let me lay this quote on you from Martin Luther from March 10th, 1522. Before, and, you, before you do that, I want to give a uh, warning. This is not fake news. This is a fact. Go ahead. Say it. <laughs> Luther, I'm going to leave out the expletive. No. Um, he, Luther said, thus, the mass is an evil thing. What? Is this microphone on? Thus, the mass is an evil thing, and God is displeased with it because it is performed as if it were a sacrifice and a work of merit. Therefore, it must be abolished. And then later on in a letter to uh, Henry VIII, written in 1522... This is what he says. Having triumphed over the mass, I think we have triumphed over the whole papacy. Wow. Dr. Ed, I just have to mention, our our phone lines are lit up when we talk about the Eucharist. But Pope Paul VI in 1965 wrote a document called Mysterium Fide. And in that document, he reaffirmed the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. And what I read into that from some of the Paritas from the Vatican Council, I actually recorded Abbot Boniface, who was there, And he said that Pope Paul VI was writing this document because there were so many theologians who were watering down the real presence of Christ that he felt morally obligated before God to restate just the facts about the real presence. Jess, your thoughts. Well, let's go to Patrick. Let's see if some people want to talk Patrick in Huntington Beach, welcome to the Terry and Jesse Show. Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate you taking my phone call. You bet. I read one time, which made me change from receiving communion in hand to on my tongue. And it said, uh, somebody was interviewing St. Mother Teresa. Mm-hmm. 
And the interviewer asked her, Mother, what do you think is the worst problem in the world today? And she, more than anyone, could have named a number of things like famine, sure. uh, breakdown of the family, rebellion against God. And she said, without pausing a second, she said, Where, wherever I go in the world, the thing that makes me the saddest is watching people receive communion in the hand. Yep. Yep. Um, I can actually speak to that, yep. uh, Patrick. That quote was actually it was Mother Teresa was speaking to Father George Rutler mm-hmm. from New York. Uh, from New York. He's he's currently at St. Michael's Parish in Hell's Kitchen. Yep. A good place for a good priest to be in Hell's That's Kitchen. Right. That's right. Um, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to rag on New York. I'm a New Yorker, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> That's right. But anyway, um, but actually, people have misinterpreted his quote. He's on public record as saying he never said that she said that communion in the hand was the issue. What she said was that people receiving carelessly, sticking their hand out and, yeah. you know, doing it without reverence was the issue. So he's on public record as clarifying a six that. Mo- clarifying that state. But still, it, what, 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 what the bottom line here is that people receiving in the hand does lead to people doing it carelessly. Of course. And that's the whole point that I see as a layman, that when I receive on my tongue, what other food do I receive on my tongue where I don't touch it? Nothing. I, when I go to McDonald's, I grab the burger and I eat it. So to me, it is a good way of realizing the real presence of Christ. And by the way, everybody, the Eucharist Source and Summit of the Christian Life by Scott Hahn, Protestant convert, he does a wonderful job biblically on the real presence. I'll give that away, or if you want the set, call 877-526-2151. I also believe if we want to get come in line with our Eastern Catholic brothers, and if if one day we want to be reunified with the Greek Orthodox Church. We do, we do. They, the the the, the penitents or, or the communicants, they tilt their head back and open their mouth. That's right. And the Holy Eucharist is put in their mouth by the priest with a spoon. Uh, you can't get any more. In other words, Reverence. everybody there that attends the divine liturgy in the Eastern Catholic Church or Greek Orthodox Church, they know there's something special there. They know they're not grabbing a Ritz cracker. They know they're not grabbing an Oreo cookie. That's right. And not only that, Archbishop Fulton Sheen says something about, in fact, he talks about the communion rail. Archbishop Fulton Sheen says that the communion rail is the greatest form of democracy. <laughs> what right. he, he goes, what do I mean by that? He goes, everybody's equal at the communion rail. Think about this. Archbishop Sheen says, you can be the wealthiest Catholic in the world. Just take, for example, Bill Gates. Yep. Or you can be a homeless Catholic, but living in a state of grace, and you can be right next to Bill Gates, the, one of the richest men in the world, and guess what? Before God in Holy Communion, you're absolutely equal. You're on your knees receiving like a child in the tongue. That's why Fulton Sheen says that that manner of receiving is the greatest form of democracy. Full Sheen ahead, Jesse. Dr. Ed, your thoughts? Yes, uh, you know, Jesus Christ is present in the least little particle. That's right. That, I don't, you know, there's a whole generation of Catholics that might not even know this. No, but it's true. Not only is, is Jesus present in the Eucharistic wafer, but he's in, if a little flake comes off, That's right. Jesus is present in that. And this is, uh, this is uh, you know, this is very serious stuff. I agree. Mike, Mike in, uh, in uh, Newport Beach, you've been waiting a while. Welcome to the Terry and Jesse show, brother. What's on your mind? Oh hi Terry. Hi, yeah, you were talking about Paul. Yeah, you were talking about Paul the Sixth. Uh, he was the one that made the, one of my favorite quotes. He said that the presence of Jesus in the Eucharist is the presence par excellence par of excellence. Jesus Christ to That's the right. Catholic Church. That's, right. That's what makes us different from all Amen, others. Amen, Mike. But you wouldn't you wouldn't think it from the way people behave. Now, even a great good bishop like Archbishop Chaput, he got this wrong. He was representing the, the conference of the Catholic bishops. He wrote a statement saying that the proper way is to receive standing. But after talking to his Franciscan friend, Father Regis Scanlon, yeah, he now says mind. we should kneel. Yeah. And here, here's the thing. Uh, I have, I'm 60, I've am i been receiving communion for 65 years. Praise I God. never saw any reasons to stop kneeling and receiving. I'm a dearly communicant. Good job. But the thing is, the other thing is, until we see our priests showing faith in the Eucharist, how rare is it to see a Catholic priest praying privately before the Blessed Sacrament. When I was young in Belfast, Northern Ireland, Father McLaughlin, he was seen before Mass up at the altar praying. Afterwards, he'd come to his confessional, sure. and he would pray in Thanksgiving and read his bravery. Nobody bothered him. Mike, so when I asked priests... Yeah. Yeah. No, Mike, I saw the same thing when I was a kid 
at St. Christopher's in West Covina with Father Tuig. I served his Mass, the 6.30 Mass. He would come at 5.30, an hour before Mass, to pray before Mass. And his example of how reverent he said Mass affected me for life. So I appreciate that comment. Your thoughts, Jess? One last thing. I want to just bring in Cardinal Burke into the mix before this segment ends. Yeah. Cardinal Burke is basically says that all the evils in the world, and we'll, we'll even say the evil of irreverence in the sacred liturgy, sure. which is to, for us the source and summit of our faith. Sure. He said, Cardinal Burke's advice, he says, is grace-filled families are the solution to the evil in the world. In other words, we got to catechize our families. I, I agree with all the callers. We have to teach our kids about the real presence. And Cardinal Burke said this as the first point of how to restore the culture from all the evil within the church and outside the church. He said, number one, center your family life on prayer. Number two, center your family life on the Holy Eucharist. Number three, center your family life on regular confession. Number four, educate your children on church teaching and moral law. That's Cardinal Burke. And you know, Jesse, years ago, I had Cardinal Burke at a family conference in Tucson, Arizona, and he has a talk on the family, restoring the family in Christ in the 21st century. I'll give that CD away. Yes, I'm a very old man, and I run into these guys over the decades that I've been involved, so I want to give that to you. Call 877-526-2151. And you can also get Scott Hahn's series, The Eucharist Source and Summit of the Christian Life. And I'm telling you, folks, this is a powerful series to teach you on the Eucharist. And by the way, Jesse, we just want to plug your marijuana conference, May 6th. It's coming up quick. Tell us again, I mean, I feel like you're the John the Baptist uh, in the Catholic Church talking on this marijuana issue. We all know what happened to John the Baptist's head, but are you still going to continue to promote the fact that uh, that drug use is uh, contrary to the gospel? Yeah, I'm getting I'm getting emails from people that actually from uh, school districts yeah. and political offices that want to buy the, the church and uh, the, the book in bulk. It's a thin book. It's called 50 Questions on, on, on Answers on, Mar on Marijuana. And basically, I'll be honest with you, I come at it biblically. Most people say, what? You, 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 you show that marijuana is dangerous biblically? Absolutely. I, I share arguments that people have never heard before because people want to get caught up into the minutiae. And the medical community says this, and Dr. So-and-so, he says that it's okay for you. It's good for your health. And, and this, you know, I don't care about that because I'm not a doctor. I'm a Christian. And guess what a Christian does? A Christian listens to God's word because the American Medical Association is all over the map on everything, on abortion, on, on transgender issues, on sex change operations, on contraception. Let me tell you something. If you think the medical community has not been politicized, then we, you need to get your head out of the sand. You know, Jesse's the fact is, we are Christians. We appeal to God's word. Dr. Ed? Yes, yeah, as I was saying, speaking about the medical community, uh, today is the feast day of St. Gianna Beretta Mola. Right. And uh, for those that don't know about her, uh, she basically gave her life for the sake of her unborn child. As she was In the early 60s, 62. Exactly. And this is a saint from our own times. I mean, her children are alive. Yeah. Um, and uh, a friend of mine, uh, uh, his name is Thomas, uh, he, uh, he's got a, an apostolate for people who are doctors, Catholic doctors, Hold on, I want yeah. to hear that story sure. in a minute. We're going to take a quick break. If you want to come to that Jesse Romero Marijuana Conference, May 6th, here at the Sacred Heart Chapel in Covina, call 877-526-2151 or go online to catholicrc.org. You can also get all the articles that we have for today on our website, catholicrc.org, or call us to get the CDs, giveaways, 877-526-2151. More in a moment. This is Bishop David O'Connell, and you're listening to The Terry and Jesse Show at Immaculate Heart Radio. Back to The Terry and Jesse Show on Immaculate Heart Radio. Want to join the conversation? Call 888-526-2151. Now here's Terry and Jesse. Does this bring a smile to your face? <laughs> does this give you courage? Amen. Sure does me. There's a Greek Orthodox bishop... I'm not even going to pronounce his full name. Let's call him <laughs> Seraphim, yeah, Bishop Seraphim, Seraphim yep. okay? He's caused a controversy, not by me, but by other people, by urging the Turkish president, his name is President Erdogan, Erdogan. He wrote him a 37-page letter in Greek asking him to convert to orthodoxy, and he told him 
that you should take the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, as your godfather. And this is not fake news. It's not a joke. <laughs> this Greek Orthodox bishop <laughs> is asking the Turkish leader to denounce his Islamic faith and be baptized in the Orthodox Church in Constantinople. He said this. L look at how sharp his words are. He yeah. says, quote, yeah. If you want to save yourself and your family, you should convert to the Greek Orthodox Church, the only real faith, Bishop Seraphim says. He says, We propose and we advise that you come to the arms of the Greek Orthodox Church before the end of your life on earth. Wow. Can I hear John the Baptist, anyone? Absolutely. Dr. Ed, let me just finish this, and I'm going to ask you, Dr. Ed, have we ever had bishops speak so bluntly and clearly in history? And I'm, you're the history man, and I'm sure we have, but let me, let me repeat what he said. He said, otherwise, you will unfortunately find yourself, your family, your people in the same place where... Now, this is... I know this is political correct, incorrectness, but I'm only repeating what the bishop... I happen to believe what he said, too, uh, by the way. He said, otherwise you will unfortunately find yourself, your family, your people in the same place where Allah, Muhammad, and his followers are in the place of suffering and eternal and unending hell. He calls Aragon to repent, cry to be humble, and believe in Christ, and claims that the Holy Trinity of God will open the arms for you. I mean, how much clearer can he be, Dr. Ed? Uh, St. Francis of Assisi... Did, took something the, similar. did something very similar. Yeah. Um, 800 years ago, St. Francis wanted to end the Crusades. He was a man of peace, right? Right. He says, okay, I know how to end the Crusades. I'll go see the Sultan yeah. in Egypt, and I'll ask him to become a Catholic, and that'll end the whole thing. <laughs> what a man. So he was courageous. He went over there. What happened? Uh, they brought him before. First they were going to kill him. Then they, they, then they, then they decided <laughs> to bring him before the— he seemed like this eccentric guy, kind of yeah. like Dr. Maza a little bit, yeah. saying strange things. They, they, they brought him before the Sultan, and the Sultan— uh, Actually, the Sultan got, took a shine to him. Yes, and uh, and he said, well, but then he says, you know, why should I convert to 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 Christianity? I'm 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 a Muslim, and uh, and don't you do Christians make war on us? And 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 he said, and, and um, Saint Francis, in, in a nutshell, basically said, look, I bring you the God of love, and and if sometimes we have to prevent you from doing violence, sometimes self defense is necessary. Of course. But, but I, I love you like I would love a member of my own body. Wow. And I don't want to see you see see you lost. Uh, so that basically, uh, he gave he actually he gave Saint Francis permission to go to the Holy Land, and to this day, it's the Franciscans who are the custodians of the of Bethlehem, when, when, the church in Bethlehem. When you say he gave him permission, it's because many Christians couldn't go there because they feared for their life; they wouldn't make it; they would be killed. Is that a fair statement? Exa exactly. But this guy, Sultan Al Al uh, Kamil, uh -huh. actually, there's even uh, some some there's some evidence that he might have actually converted at the end of his life. Really? Now that's fascinating. Yeah. Wow, Jesse. Here's the only thing I want to say about uh, bi the bishop's, uh, his statement, uh, Bishop Seraphim. Yeah. He did say at the end, and Terry, you read it, where he basically says <laughs> uh, that Allah is in hell. Now, the only thing that I would say about that is that from my understanding, from talking to Middle Eastern Catholics, Allah is the Arabic term for God. However, you can see a distinction here because you know, the, the Orthodox Church, who believes just like we do, that God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yes. And they, li they live amongst monks, Muslims. The Orthodox will tell you, unlike what you'll hear Catholic theologians say, the Orthodox will tell you that, that Muslims and Christians don't believe in the same God. And, and I respect the Orthodox argument because they'll say this. They'll say the Quran denies that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he's a divine person. And the Quran denies that God is a trinity of persons. Therefore, the Orthodox, they're very consistent. When they read the Quran, they'll say, they'll say things that are politically incorrect. You know, they're not involved in this inter, interreligious dialogue stuff. They're saying, we don't worship the same God. That's why he said what he said in that article. Yeah. And by the, the last thing I want to mention, I want to pray for the victims in Fresno who were just killed by... Uh, um, uh, oh, yeah, it was... Uh, it was a Mormon, somebody, Jesse. No, no, it no, was an it Amish. Oh, it was Amish. A Quaker. Okay. Oh, Quaker. No, it was a homeschooling Catholic, Terry. Oh. No, it was a uh, it was a, a black gentleman who, with a pistol, as he started shooting white people, he says, um, he started yelling "Allah Ahu Akbar." Oh my Allah God. Ahu Akbar, and the evidence is from his uh, that he was a practicing Muslim. I want to pray for those people Amen. right now in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Eternal rest grant unto those innocent victims in Fresno, O Lord, and let, and let your perpetual light shine upon, upon them. them. May the soul of these innocent victims through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Amen. Name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. Yeah, his name, is, the suspect's name is Corey Ali Muhammad. 39 years old. He was arrested shortly after the, the shooting rampage. And he said that he basically wanted to kill white people. And he yelled uh, the name of God. Allah is great as he pray for performed him. the shootings. Yeah, yeah. You know, well, let's right? go. You know, guys, uh, it was it was 12 years ago today that the College of Cardinals uh, meeting in the Sistine Chapel elected uh, Joseph Cardinal Ratzinger as oh, Papa Benedetto the 16th, Pope yeah. Benedict, and he just actually turned 90 mm -hmm. on Sunday. Uh, and I, I want I, what you what you guys are talking about. What we're talking about brings me to what uh, P Pope Benedict said in his Regensburg address. Yeah, he got in trouble for that. He got in <laughs> back in October, uh, back in September of 2006. Yeah. Uh, Pope Benedict gave an, a, a, an address at, 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 at where he used to where he used to teach yeah. years ago, and he he mentioned a dialogue between a Byzantine emperor. Right, we're talking about the Greek Orthodox Church, right? Right. right. A Byzantine emperor and a Persian Muslim. In which, and he quotes Pope Benedict quoted the Byzantine emperor as saying this to the Persian Muslim. He said that um, God is not pleased with bloodshed, and you can't spread religion through violence. Yeah. See, God is a God of reason, logos. Mm. You see, it says in the beginning was the was the logos, and the, and the logos was with God, and the logos was God. Right, and in the opening chapters of, of John, and when Pope Benedict re just repeated this. He got a whole flood of, 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 of vitriol. For what, though? Uh, for, coming from irate Islamists ah. and also from the New York Times and actually from, from Prime Minister Ergodin's government in Turkey. Denout the, the, one of the spokespeople for Ergodin's government criticized Pope Benedict as having a dark mentality. He, he has a dark mentality from the, middle, from the dark ages. He hasn't benefited from the reforms in Christianity. So, <laughs> you know... You can be sure if you've upset some people, you're following Christ. <laughs> well said, well said. You know, I think we need a little bit more of that today rather than the political correctness that says you're okay, I'm okay. Here's the bottom line, Dr. Ed and Jesse. Our listeners, ask yourself this question. Isn't it time that we Christians evangelize, whether it's Muslims or non-Christians, and rather than stay quiet and just say, oh, you know, everybody has their opinion, they have their truth, I have my truth— that's just not right. That's not what the Catholic Church teaches. And that's why I want to encourage you, our listeners, to get deep into the Eucharist, the Source and Summit, by Dr. Scott Hahn's CD set. I'm giving the first CD away. You get two copies to help people understand the real presence of Christ. Call 877-526-2151. Jess? I'll tell you, I'll tell you what Muslims, they, they respect. They respect people that are willing to engage with them in the arena of ideas. They don't respect cowards. They don't respect people saying, oh, can we hold hands and, and, and around a tree and sing Kumbaya because we all believe in the same God. They don't respect that. I've had good talks with Muslims, and they've told me, you're the only Catholic that talks like this. They've told me this to my face. Yep. They've told me this in conferences. That says, you're the only Catholic that opens up the Quran and starts showing us things that we don't even know about the Quran, yep. things that are purported errors. And so they respect that. They do. Muslims don't respect cowards. And I'm telling you right now, there's a cowardly spirit in the Catholic Church when it comes to evangelizing Islam. And Pope Benedict XVI, here's one of the things that he said in the Regensburg Address in 2006. And you see it every day in the news. For example, in Fresno, he says this, religion without reason leads to fanaticism. Yep. And that's what you have with these terrorist attacks all over the world. And why is this happening? Because right around the 10th century, when the is, I, Islamic scholars got together to see if reason was going to be compatible with their faith, yep. well, they rejected. The, yep. the, the, they rejected reason basically in the 10th century, and they now appeal, as of the 10th century and forward, the, the apologists that are Quran alone apologists, they won the day, they won the debate, so that's what we have today. That's why you have these terrorists when they commit an act of violence. What do they do? They don't quote a Bible verse. They quote a verse from the Quran to justify their actions. If you want a good CD set on Islam and how to evangelize, Father Zachariah Boutros, I'm telling you, the guy is converting five to six million Muslims a year. And I've got a four CD 
CD set that I'm giving away, the first CD. You just call 877-526-2151. Dr. Ed, can you back up what Jesse just said? Yes, in fact, I have a book that's coming out next week by Angelico Press. Yes, you do. I, I wrote a book on Catholic evangelization of Jews and Muslims. Really? It's called The Scholastics and the Jews. And uh, I mentioned somebody in there that probably most Catholics don't know about. Yeah, who's that? Uh, his name is uh, Bishop uh, Theodore Abu Kura. Never heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> he lived in the 800s. Okay. And he was uh, a Catholic yeah. bishop. Uh, and he recognized the authority of the Pope, yeah. and he engaged in dialogue with Muslims and, um, and, and debate, and he stressed reason and reasonableness. Just what Jesse was saying, the Pope said, yeah. Interesting. Folks, and if you want to get Dr. Ed's book, we'll have it here once it comes out. You can actually pre-order it by calling 877-526-2151 or pick up Scott Hahn's CD set, The Eucharist and Source and Summit of the Christian Life, or even... Father Zachariah Butro set on how to evangelize Muslims. Call 877-526-2151. This is High Energy Catholic Radio. We'll be right back. This is Dr. Scott Hahn, and you are listening to the Terry and Jesse Show on Immaculate Heart Radio. Blue Collar Catholic Radio, full contact Catholicism. Amen. We're, t- we're talking about this incredible Greek Orthodox bishop, Seraphim, who's basically calling the president of Turkey to convert to Christianity. To me, uh, I believe he's following what Jesus Christ says in Matthew 28, 19, the, the Great Commission. Yep. And uh, again, we've had a pope in our lifetime, Pope Ben the Sixteenth, who, in a, in a more sophisticated way, yep. he, he, he made a statement back in 2006, and this is exactly what he said, which the PC culture, the thought police... Those people that want to, uh, uh, you know, they, they want to tell us what we can say and what we can't say and what we can think and what we cannot think. Here's what Pope Bennett said. He was, he was describing uh, a, a conversation with an emperor back in the Middle Ages, and he was describing an educated Persian on the subject of Christianity and Islam. It was the uh, Byzantine emperor Manuel Paleologus. On the subject of Islam, here's what the Pope said, quote, Show me just what Muhammad brought that was new, and there you will find things only evil and inhuman, wow. such as his command to spread by the sword the faith he preached. Close quote. This is what drew a firestorm. The Pope was quoting a discussion, a dialogue that happened back in 1391, between a scholarly Byzantine emperor, Manuel II, on the subject of Islam, uh, being threatened by the Ottoman Empire. And the fact of the matter is, what the Pope was really trying to establish in this conversation, he's trying to establish the point, and Dr. Ed, I want you to comment on this, that, that the God that we believe in as Christians, the Judeo-Christian understanding, is a reasonable God who does nothing contrary to reason. And, and the Pope went on to suggest that God being reasonable could not endorse the spread of religion by violence because forced conversions are a contradiction to a reasonable God. Uh, correct me, uh, Dr. Ed, if I'm wrong. No, you're absolutely on target, uh, Jess. People don't realize this, but the, the, from, from the earliest days of the Church, the Church has always respected the free will of, of, con- of prospective converts. I'm an expert on, on the Jews uh, during the Middle Ages and how the that. Church treated them. And the Church, from Pope Gregory the Great to Pope Innocent III to Pope Gregory the Ninth, mm-hmm. you, the, all these papal statements say that you can't forcibly baptize somebody. You have to respect their free will. Mm-hmm. And yet the Church, the Catholic Church, doesn't get any credit for giving the modern world tolerance. The notion of liber- religious liberty or tolerance comes from the Catholic Church. Wow, Dr. Ed, that's fascinating. Folks, you're listening to the Terry and Jesse Show. If you just tuned in, you'd been hearing three guys who love Jesus Christ and his bride, the church, talking about some very powerful things. If you missed the topic on the Eucharist, because i got to tell you, the bishop uh, actually up in um, the begin- uh, the diocese up in uh, what is Madison, it? Madison, Wisconsin. Thank you. Madison has begun to say that Holy Communion will be received on the tongue and kneeling. And he also said, though, that if someone refused to have recu- they, the communion on the tongue, they can consen- continue to receive. But he's trying to bring back 
reverence towards the Eucharist. And I don't know about you, but that is music to my ears because, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, for 40 years I've been talking to people about the real presence, and statistics have shown Catholics don't get it. And so what's it going to take? I think what it's going to take is bishops leading like that because uh, I'm convinced that we need to have the reform of the reform when it comes to catechesis on the Eucharist. Call call 877-526-2151. Get Dr. Hahn's CD set, The Eucharist Source and Summit of the Christian Life. Before I turn it back to Jesse, also we talked earlier about Cardinal Burke talking about restoring the family. He, he's just quoting St. John Paul II's letter in 94 when he said the way the family goes is the way the culture goes. And I have a CD by Cardinal Burke on that topic. Mom and Dad, you might want to get that. I'll give you two copies if you call 877-526-2151. Dr. Ed, here's a question for you. I'm going to pick your, <laughs> your, your uh, historical mind. <laughs> I believe that the reason the, there will never be a Christian-Muslim uh, successful dialogue is because we as Christians believe in a rational God and Muslims don't believe in a rational God. They believe in an irrational God. So I believe that that's why the constructive dialogue has not really been done fruitful. anything in the last... Yeah, yeah been fruitful in 1,300 years because our view of God is totally different. Opposite. And so do you believe that that's where, the, that's where the dialogue breaks down is our view of God being rational versus being irrational? Tell me what you really think, Jess. <laughs> <laughs> You know, that's, that's what people you know, want to hear. I want to say it's very important for, for people to dialogue with non-Catholics because, yeah. you know, I, I, I have to thank you and you and Jess, Terry, yeah. for pulling, pulling me out of Santeria. You know, ever since I got away from that, <laughs> I, it's totally changed my well, good, life. Good for you. I get invited to so many Catholic conferences now as yeah. a result of that. But, no, but it, in answer to your original question, Jess, um, it's like this. People don't know this, but during the 800s was yeah. the golden age of Islam. And the capital of, the, of Islam in those days was Baghdad. Now, if you had your choice whether to live in Baghdad today or to live in, uh, you know, uh, Los Angeles today, I think you'd probably choose Los Angeles. Yeah, you think over over Baghdad. Sure. But but back in the uh, back in the ninth century, uh, Baghdad was much more cultural than let's say London was because London was actually being attacked by uh, godless Vikings. Mm -hmm. But anyway, my point is this: uh, the, the the caliph at that time actually was a believer in rational thinking. He, there was a, a school of Muslim thought called the Matazalites, mm -hmm. and they were influenced by Christians, Christians who introduced them to the ancient Greek philosopher of Aristotle Beautiful. and Plato. Yes. And uh, this is something that uh, Pope Benedict also alludes to in his Regensburg address, the fact that we need to re-encounter as Christians the rational side of our faith. And but what unfortunately in uh, and you can read more about this in in the, in a book called The Closing of the Muslim Mind. Mm -hmm. um, it goes into some detail on this, but just to give you the, nut, the nutshell yeah. here, is that the other group of Muslims, the Asherites, uh, began to attack the Matazalite position. Mm -hmm. uh, just to give you one quick example. Yeah, give us. Uh, why does water freeze at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, guys? Because that's, no that's the physical, <laughs> that's just how it works. That's the nature of water, <laughs> right? Right, right. 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 Okay. But right. if you're an Asherite... You know why it, it freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit? No. Because Allah said so. Oh, I get the, ah. I got the difference. Yeah, now I get it. Yeah. So, Good analogy. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, another uh, a scholastic uh, guy that I, I study and I talk about in my book uh, is uh, St. Thomas Aquinas. And, of course, his great teacher was St. Albert the Great. Mm -hmm. And they both had access uh, to Aristotle, mm -hmm. actually thanks to the Muslims in Spain, who had uh, – it's a long story. But anyway, yeah. long story short – um, St. Albert the Great explains how we need to understand the nature of things with our rational intellect, right? And then you, you, that's how you develop science, you see. But what happened in Islam is that by the end of the ninth century, the, the, the Asherite Muslims prevailed over the Matazalite Muslims, and that was the end of the discussion. And so the, the use of reason was curtailed, and a lot of people would argue that's why, you know, the West took off rather than the East taking off to, and producing modern science. Ed, that's fascinating. But, you know, I think of modern man today, not just in the Catholic Church, but modern man. We don't think about reason. 
It's how do you feel, Dr. Ed? Hey, well, that's the other thing that Pope Benedict brought up in his Regensburg address. He got, he got it from both barrels. He, he, he criticized the Eastern world for being too fundamentalist and not encouraging reason. And then he criticized the Western world, America, uh, England, the, yeah. you know, the, the Western yeah. civilization, for being too rational and yet not rational enough. Because people say, well, I don't want to believe in religion. It's all superstition. And then they try to say, you know, I don't believe in truth. But, but you have to use your reason to, 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 to figure out stuff. Of course. Right? It, 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 they don't believe in the – today, people don't believe the, the authority of reason yeah. to settle things, right? That's right. Think about gay marriage or think about – How do you feel, Ed? It, it's Exactly. It's all about feeling. <laughs> hey, Jesse, wrap this thing up. This has been a great conversation. Yeah. You know what? Dr. Ed says that something uh, that it's quite possible – that St. Francis in his dialogue with the Sultan back in the Middle Ages or back in the 13th century, that he may have converted to Christ. And in fact, I just found, found out that it's very possible that he did. Wow. Here's what, here's what the, the Sultan was so impressed, I'm um, reading here, uh, that he allowed St. Francis to preach to his subjects. And it says, this was the last words that the Sultan said to St. Francis. This, and this was written, by the way, in 1221 by Jacques de Vitry. The Sultan said this, quote, to St. Francis, Francis, pray for me that God may deign to reveal to me that law and faith which is most pleasing to him, close quote. So that was the parting words of the Sultan. Obviously, St. Francis didn't start telling them stuff like, hey, we all believe in the same thing. We all believe in the same God. It's all the same religion. We're all going to the same place. No. St. Francis gave him some power preaching. In fact, if you want to hear what St. Francis said to the Sultan, here's one sentence. He says this, Sultan, if you do not wish to believe, we will commend your soul to God because we declare that if you die holding your law, you will be lost and God will not accept your soul. That's what St. Fr- <laughs> Francis said. We need to emulate him. We need to emulate him. Ed... Well, I was just going to ask one quick question. Is it true that the Sultan said if all Christians were like you, finish the statement? Then I would definitely become a Christian. That's what he said. Yeah. That's a true statement, isn't it? Folks, you've been listening to the Terry and Jesse show. Dr. Ed Mazza, Jesse Romero, and Terry Barber. What a show. If you want to hear it again, if you want a copy of the show, because a lot of good information came in, call us at 877-526-215. We're giving away Cardinal Burke's CD on the family. Also, Dr. Scott Hahn on the Eucharist and the Source and Summit, a catechesis on the real presence. We need to get that message out to our church. Wouldn't you agree? Help us get that message out by calling 877-526-2151 or go online to Catholic RC. Jesse, finish it up, brother. Hey, life is short. Death is for sure. Sin is the problem and Jesus is the cure. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Full sheen ahead, buddy. We'll see you again tomorrow. Same time, same station. May God richly bless you and your family.